Three, two, one, go. So guys, I'm here in the OCZ suite and we've actually got a ton of new stuff, even more than we saw at CES 2010. So there's a few things here that probably won't have much relevance to your everyday consumer now, but it's a bit of a glimpse into what we're gonna see in the future. So this is a very early mock-up of what's called an IBIS XL. So this uses the proprietary OCZ HSDL interface, which is much, much faster than even SATA 6 gigabit per second. So you can see that back there. It looks kind of like a SAS connection, but like I said, it is significantly faster. So this guy is available in capacities up to four terabytes. And then beyond that, you can even expand it to up to 16 terabytes. So uh, that's pretty much unheard of at this point for an SSD. So moving right along, this is what I was talking about before. This is HSDL, this is their IBIS drive. I've actually unboxed this on my channel in the past, so you guys should be pretty familiar with this. Well, here's an optical version of HSDL. So now we're converting HSDL into an optical signal that we can carry over a much thinner and probably potentially a much longer cap uh, cable depending on the applications that we're trying to go for here. So that is one of the things that they are showcasing here in the suite. Moving over, we have some more things that we're already familiar with. This is Revo Drive X2. This is a bootable uh, that uses quad controllers, four Sandforce SF1200 controllers. You can actually hear, if I can get my cameraman to come in and have a look at the overall specs so you guys can read that uh, rather than me listing off everything. But there's the key one up to 120,000 4K IOPS. This is a consumer level product. It is pricey, but it is within reach. Revo Drive is fewer controllers, lesser performance, not bootable, but still a very high performance storage solution. So let's keep moving on down here and we're gonna find some more interesting stuff. This is Z Drive R3. And what's cool about this guy is that not only does do we have Z Drive level performance, we are using a newer Sandforce controller, the 1565, and we also have full support for trim. So even though this is a raid on a card, we do have trim support. So that is just a, f a first. I have never seen an SSD drive in person before that supports raid and trim, well, internal raid and trim at the same time. Z Drive R2, we've seen this before as far as I can recall. And this is a cool one over here. So this is Helios. This guy uses SAS 2, six gigabit per second. This same thing here. Uh, OCZ has built in custom logic that allows it to use an internal raid without actually booting into a RAID BIOS, configuring the drive, and doing everything manually. What that means is they have bypassed all of the limitations that existed in the past for these internal RAID drives, but they're still able to deliver outstanding performance. So up here you can have a quick look with um, the ones that we're looking at right now, we're looking at up to 85K IOPS at 4K, but with the newer controllers, we can potentially even double that. So these are Deneva drives. These ones are, like I said, not everything here is going to be relevant to consumers. These are mostly geared towards corporate customers. And moving along, we have quite a few things that we're familiar with, like Vertex 2EX. That's an SLC version of the Vertex 2. We also have the Vertex 3 Pro. Well, these are preliminary specifications. These are not finalized. This is using the new Sandforce SF2582 controller, which supports SATA 3 6 gigabit per second. So check out those reads and write speeds. Those are well above the max maximum rated throughput of SATA 2. So that is why we did need to move, well we, OCZ, did need to move to a SATA 3 interface. Vertex 3 EX is that, except SLC Flash, so slightly better performance, better longevity. Let's keep moving along here. Vertex 2 Pro is pretty much like Vertex 2, except it uses an SF1500 controller, which means it does have power loss data protection. It has a super cap on it. Not necessarily real relevant for your everyday average Joe consumer, but it's a great option to have. Here's a Vertex 2 in a 1.8 inch form factor. Here's the Vertex 2 we're very familiar with, and this is a neat one. So this is a Vertex 2, three and a half inch drive, but instead of using a big uh, boxy enclosure, like here you can see, let's compare it against the IBIS. I wanna get that top down, here, up here, and then down. Yeah, top down perspective on these. So you can see they've built a much slimmer three and a half inch enclosure for that Vertex 2 drive much sleeker and sexier looking. Here we have Onyx and Onyx 2 based on Indolinx and SF1200, so we've seen that before. So that's it for the OCZ SSDs here in their booth. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips, and I've got more videos coming on CES. Yeah, cool.
So just as a quick correction to what I said over there, uh, the Rebo Drive original version is bootable. My bad. So anyway, let's have a look at this guy right here. So I showed you the Z Drive R3 already, but here we actually have a working sample. And this is, I'm not 100% sure if this is going to be the finalized firmware, finalized PCB layout, all that good stuff. But this drive is booted, it is working in a computer. Remember, this is fully trim capable and it features internal RAID with a next generation Sandforce controller. And here you can actually see if you have some context for good, for ADO benchmarks, you can see right here we've got uh, read speeds uh, anywhere above um, anywhere above about yeah, 128, wow, we're seeing up to about one gigabyte per second. Remember, that's not one gigabit, that's one gigabyte per second read speeds up at the very, very high end, and even approaching one gigabyte per second on writes as well, so that's outstanding. One, go. We got another thing to check out here in the OCZ suite. I'm sorry the lighting's so bad in here, guys. So my cameraman's gonna have to get pretty close to show you these products. So we have a return of the original silencer power supplies from PC Power and Cooling. So at risk of wrecking their demo, I'm gonna go ahead and pick this up and I'm gonna show you guys the back of this unit. So it does use an 80 millimeter cooling fan, but in order to reduce airflow turbulence through the power supply, they've actually shifted a lot of the components and cooling up to the front of the power supply so that right around the fan you don't get that that hissing sound of the air rushing around components so that's one of the ways that they've really optimized this for silence now these are both 80 plus silver models I'm not actually sure which capacities are available other than these two but so far we've got a 760 watt as well as a 910 watt and one of the things that really stands out about these guys other than the wide variety of connections on them is right here these feature a seven year warranty so that is pretty outstanding right there next on sort of the other end of the spectrum we've got the ZS series so this is a bit of a replacement for the Stealth Extreme 2 they've added 80 plus bronze certification we've got a three-year warranty 500 600 and 7 watt, 700 watt capacities and one thing that they have added on the 700 watt is four dedicated PCIe connectors so you can run a modern system with dual GPUs off of the 700 watt ZS series without any difficulty whatsoever and then this is this is the big guns so this is the ZS ZX series that right here I'm holding the 1250 watt power supply but there's an 850 watt as well as a 1000 watt version that are also available you can see these feature a fully modular interface with six dedicated PCIe connectors now you can see right here these modular connections are all 8 pin so these are all 6 plus 2 pin connectors that means you can run three GPUs regardless of what kind and uh, you're not going to run out of connectors now a lot of power supplies will actually give you a bunch of PCI Express connectors and then they'll give you one CPU one and one like combo CPU PCIe one and then you end, up, you end up with like one odd man out. So they have not gone that route. They have given you two dedicated EPS 8 pin connectors, five peripheral connectors and then one full 24 pin ATX. I'm actually going to pick up the lowest wattage one here and I'm going to see if we have a comparable uh, business end of that one. So the only thing missing on this guy versus the 1250 watt unit is uh, two PCIe six, or eight pin connectors and that makes sense because this is an 850 watt power supply and that probably wouldn't be suitable. So these guys are all 80 plus gold, like I said, fully modular and they do come with a five year warranty. So thank you for checking out my little video about the OCZ power supplies and their suite. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips.